countries in the developing world that find oil are less democratic, they are more likely to suffer from civil wars, they tend to have more economic problems, they even have fewer opportunities for women in the labor force. There's a whole cluster of problems that are distinctly linked to the discovery of oil. And that cluster of problems is what we call the oil curse. If you look around the world, there's been a wave of democratic transitions in all parts of the, all parts of the globe. But the oil producing countries are the ones that have been the great exception. And we see this very clearly in the Arab Spring, that those countries that didn't have oil were more likely to see reforms or even successful overthrows of government, like in Tunisia and, and Egypt. The more oil that governments had, the better they were able to put down the uprisings and retain tight control of, uh, of society. The Syrian case is very, very, uh, it's complex and it's difficult. It's interesting that, um, that the Syrian government had actually received quite a bit of its revenues from oil, from the sale of oil, even though it's not, not a terribly wealthy country and doesn't have that much oil. And that over the last five years, oil production has been declining sharply. So the, while well, the Assad regime was pretty well able to manage popular discontent five years ago, when the Arab Spring came along, they didn't have the same kinds of resources that other countries, the Algerians or Kuwaits or uh, Iran's had to, um, uh, to put processors down. In the long run, um, the countries that depend not on natural resource extraction, but on the education of their population, on uh, improved living conditions, on entrepreneurial skills, those are the ones that seem to prosper in the long run. In the last 10 years, there has been much greater attention paid to, uh, to the importance of transparency and good governance in these countries. And so, while I argue in the book that not nearly enough has been done, um, it's also true that, uh, that we've come a long way in the last 10 years. The, the pattern we see again and again looking around the world is that countries vastly overestimate the degree to which they'll benefit from finding new resource wealth. And they vastly underestimate how complicated and difficult it is to take real advantage of it um, in a sustainable way.